In this lesson, we're going to look at our sound effects for our Task 1C arrangement. Now, in Pump Up the Volume, there are loads and loads and loads of sound effects. And the way they use these is to kind of really develop the piece. So they're using things from kind of average everyday sounds like police sirens and kind of bells and whistles down to vinyl scratches and all kinds of things like that. Now, for my money, I think it's just a little bit over the top. So I'm going to kind of not do as much as that in the early stages. The reason for this is because I've still got to find space for my vocals and I've still got to find space for my harmonies and my chords. So I'm just going to start by just setting up my channels and giving myself enough blank channels that I can add more sound effects later on. Now, so I've, I've created two and I've just placed them in, in tiny areas. One of the biggest and most important areas I've put it in is this crossover because I really want to make the crossover massively different. So I've I've kind of built that area up quite a lot. But in this other area, I've just put in just a couple of scratches. And what these scratches do is they just kind of transition the piece to the next development. Okay, and it's really nice kind of drop in to kind of move to the next part of the song or part of the arrangement. I'll show you how I've configured them in a minute, but let me just show you what it sounds like so far, okay? So both these tracks are on, and both these tracks are using Ultra Beat. Ultra Beat is a fantastic little drum sampler, so it makes it possible for me to just load up whatever sound effects I want as quickly, and then create my little patterns that I want, and it and it's done. It's really that easy. So here you go. Here, here's what we've got so far. <laughs> Okay, and that's the same there, and that's the same there. And it just kind of pushes it into the next section, which is really, really nice. It's probably a little bit more obvious here. So let me just play play this part as well. Okay, so let me just play you that those parts on their own, just so you can hear what they're actually doing. Okay, and that's just an arrangement of sound effects that have just been dropped into Ultra Beat, okay? So let's just start by looking at this particular one here. So, we've got it on solo. Let's bring up Ultra Beat, and we're going to see that we have these patterns. Now, I may have deleted my pattern because I, I probably just don't need it, but here are all my sounds. And what you can see is I've got all these blank ones. And I'll, in a moment, I'll show you how to drop on a different sample and kind of put that into your arrangement as well. But here's what I've got. <laughs> Now there's a really good website called freesound.org and if you need samples, everyday kind of ambient samples that are just kind of bells, whistles, scratches, um, police sirens, all the rest of it, freesound.org has got loads and loads and loads and loads and loads, absolutely millions of them and it's a really fantastic library and it's completely free as, it, as the name says. So get yourself over there to get some samples for your piece and I mean you can just see the depth of what I've got here. And the good thing about Ultra Beat, as I said in the previous lesson, is when you turn it, when you turn this kind of editing window on, this pattern sequencer on, you can press play and you can actually look at what your samples are sounding like. So if I, oops, let me just press stop. If I just turn this off, because obviously I don't want to play both, but if I want this in my piece, all I have to do then is grab this little button there and drag it to my piece. Okay, and now it's in there, and now we can go unsolo that, we can have a listen, see what that sounds like. Okay, so that adds a bit more depth to it. I'm not gonna leave that in there, but I just wanted to show you that. So there's my first sampler, I'm um, sorry, drum machine, stroke sampler of course. Now here's my second one. So here's what we've got so far with this one, and this is more of a, a drum pattern type thing, just made out of percussion-y sounds. And this was all done using the pattern sequencer, so none of this was kind of put in here. It was all done using this pattern sequencer, and if I have a look, I've probably got my pattern saved here somewhere. Uh, no, apparently not, not to worry. Um, but you can just load up a pattern, or you can create your own just by clicking on the dots, okay? Nice and easy. And I did show you that in the drum one, but just in case you guys have forgotten. You do need to turn it on, but remember to turn it off. You don't want this running all the way through your piece, okay? Okay, so if I really liked that, once again, I could... 
come into my piece and I could grab this little button here and I could drag it onto my piece and then I could press play to see what it sounds like okay and that adds another depth if you want to make it last for longer all you do is pull that handle out and then you've got the piece looping which is fantastic I don't want that now the next thing I want to show you is how to kind of take these em empty loops and actually put your own sample on. So you need to select the region that you want, the empty empty loop. Now what I'm going to do is just go to a blank template here. So let me just go to number six. And it's completely blank. I'm going to click on this one and then we're going to take it out of full view mode. Now in the background here I have a sample already loaded up. So if I just move this out of the way, all I'm going to do is take this scratch sample and if I make that bigger, I'll probably be able to play that before we start. Okay, and that's straight from freesound.org. Now, I can drag that onto there. Okay, wait a couple of seconds, and that should be done. Now, if I want to hear that, go back to my full screen mode. Turn this on, and I need to turn it up. And let's see what we've got. Let's make that a bit longer, because it's quite a long sample. Okay. Okay, so now that's in my piece, nice and easy. Now, one thing you can also do, sorry, I keep pressing the wrong button. What you can also do, go back in, and all of these parameters now are related to this particular instrument, okay? So if I clicked on this one here, then all of these parameters here would be related just to this one here. So by selecting that one, I then have all this. One of the really cool things is this button here, I didn't realize this until the other day, I thought it was a play button, but it actually reverses it. So now, and how cool is that? It just reverses it, which is really, really nice. You can also use these dials here to cut the sample up a little bit. Okay, so that's quite nice, quite like that. And if you look through the documentation, you can see that there's so much more that you can do with these particular samples. But my main mission here was just to show you that you could add your own samples and you could cut it up and then you could put it into your sequencer player as many times as you liked okay so let's have a listen and see how my pattern sounds okay so that's really nice so now what I'm going to do turn that off and let's just pull my sample into my piece drop it there and let's just see what we've got Okay, so not really what I wanted for my particular piece at this juncture, but I can I can add that in later if I really want it, and I probably will build the sound effects up more. I just wanted to start off very, very slowly with the sound effects. I know that I want lots in there, but I didn't know how far I wanted to take them. I know I needed scratch samples because I wanted to write about that for my logbook um, as per the kind of house style and, and certainly my pump up the volume track. But I'm just gonna leave it very, very simple at the minute until I've got my vocals in, until I've got my chords in and see how it starts to build up there, okay? That's pretty much all I have to say about that. So let's get the sound effects in and in the next lesson, we're gonna start looking at putting our harmonies down to make sure we've got the right chord progressions to make sure everything is gelling the way it should be, okay? So I'll see you in the next lesson.